Hello, in this video, I'm going to introduce the idea of web crawling. Now, in CS220, we've done a lot of what we call web scraping. Maybe I'm trying to pull data out of a single page. Uh, crawling is a little bit more sophisticated. Maybe a website or a collection of websites have a, a large number of pages and we want to pull information off of them. And we don't even really know what all the pages are when we start. Maybe I uh, kind of look at one page and then the links on that help me learn about some other pages and maybe the links on those help me learn about some other pages. And, uh, and pretty soon I can maybe find a lot of data on different web pages and try to pull it all in uh, to my program. That's going to be web crawling. <clears throat> Companies like Google are uh, amazing at this, right? That's kind of their bread and butter business. Um, and uh, so how can we do that? Hopefully as I'm describing that, it sounds a little bit like a search problem, a graph search. Uh, so in this video, I'm maybe showing how we can do a breadth first search for web crawling. And then eventually we're going to talk about things like um, how we can be considerate web, web, web crawlers. I mean, if we're looking at a lot of pages, we can easily overwhelm a website and we don't want to do that. So what I've done is I've created a bunch of different uh, kind of simple um, web pages that we can search that have some sort of graph structure to them. And these are actually all based on uh, examples that students came up with uh, last semester. And so I can see I ha have here page one.html, that's node one. Um, and, and as I'm clicking on this, I want you to be thinking about, well, what kind of graph uh, is this that I'm exploring? So, so I can go to page from one, one to two, and then from two to four, and then, then four to six, and then I hit a dead end. So that was one, two, four, six. But let me head back to the beginning, back a few times. Uh, what if instead of going to two, I go to three? So one to three, three to five, then five to six, I end up in the same place. What kind of graph was that? Well, uh, it's definitely directed, right? So it's a directed graph, right? There's kind of one page points to another. Um, is it a DAG? Were there any cycles there? Uh, there were no cycles, right? There was no way I could have kind of get stuck in a, in a loop, right? So this is a directed acyclic graph and I may write some breadth first uh, search code uh, to explore it. So I'm actually gonna be working on my, um, on my virtual machine today, as you can see. And, uh, and so that means I may have to be in headless mode. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of work before we can even get started. Um, let, me, let me start up my web browser in headless mode. Actually, if I try to start it like this, if I don't have headless mode on, um, it's gonna complain, right? It can't really do that. And, um, and it kind of gives a strange error, right? Just that Chrome accident abnormally. So if you get that, you know, make sure you have that on. So I run that and, uh, and now it will hopefully actually work fine. Let me, let me just try to grab this URL I want to start from. I want to start from here. And, uh, and I have that URL like so. And and, and what I'll do is I'll try to get that. So I'll say b.get URL and, uh, and nothing exciting happens because, well, it's in headless mode. So what, what really went on there? Uh, I don't know. So one of the first things I want to do before I get into the breadth first search stuff is write a nice function that will actually help me see what's going on, uh, even though I'm working from a virtual machine. And so I'm going to write this function, which is going to be called uh, visit page. And uh, it's going to take a URL and then that's going to be the one it's going to visit. And then it will return uh, other URLs um, based on the links. Okay. And, and then what it's also going to do is it's going to, you know, show a screenshot of the page just so we can tell what's going on. Okay. So I'm going to take my URL and, um, and then I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this b.tlet, b.tlet url like so and um and if i wanted to use um, uh let's say beautiful soup then i'd probably do something like this i'd probably say something like b dot you know page source and i'd probably build like a, a beautiful soup object from that and uh, and like so right i'd probably get some sort of page like that and um and, and then i'd probably do something like you know page dot find all you know i want to get all the hyperlinks um, I'm not going to use beautiful soup this time. There's kind of similar things to all of these 
uh, baked into selenium itself. And, um, and I just kind of want to keep those straight. So I'm going to leave that beautiful soup code there for a while. And uh, I'm going to try to get the, the links using um, just selenium. And, um, and, and let, let me just try to review how to do that. So if I say dir on b, I can see all the things that my Chrome browser has. And, um, and I see that I can find elements by by tag name, which is what I want, right? So, so I want to get something like this. I want to say uh, b dot find elements by tag name, and I'm looking for a tags. And maybe I'll just put this in a link of, of less, right? So I'll say these are my links, and uh, and let's just try to print those out. Okay, so let's try visiting a page, right? So I'm going to try visiting that first URL. And then I can see, well, there's some links to other pages right in this big list. Okay, um, before I go too far, um, I'm going to set this aside for a moment to kind of come back to this. You know, find links on the page. Um, the other thing I want to do is, you know, see the page. And, um, and so, well, how can I do that? Uh, one thing I can do is I could take a screenshot. I could say, say, uh, b dot uh, save screenshot like that and um, uh, maybe I'll just call it screen.png and, and then what I'd really like to do is I'd like to just kind of show that on, on this screen right so I can I can see what's happening and and so to do that I may have to um, import something um, I'm gonna say import uh, ipython.core.display Actually, I may say from that, from that module. You've seen before we actually have like this display function and display works a lot like, um, it works a lot like print. Oh, from that import display. It works a lot like print, but it can kind of deal with more complex types and strings, right? Like I could put like a, an image here like that, which is another type that I have here. And, uh, and so that's what I'm gonna do down here. So I can actually kind of print what's happening um, and, and the image is, well, the one I just created, right? So I'm going to grab this here and, um, and, and put that there. And, uh, and now I can actually see the page, and, uh, and it's a very large page. And this is going to kind of help me see, well, those are those um, uh, two links, right? So, so that's where this is kind of coming from here, right? I mean, I have one link here and, um, and then another link here. So that's good. So I can actually kind of troubleshoot this stuff as I'm, I'm going instead of kind of just like operating without seeing anything. Okay. So I was talking about how I could do that with Beautiful Soup. I'm not using Beautiful Soup. I'm using uh, Selenium instead. Um, let's, uh, let, let's loop over these links maybe as a first step. So maybe I'll say something like for, uh, maybe for something like A, right? Because it's an A tag, right? For A uh, and links. Uh, again, if this were if this were like beautiful soup, I could do something like this. I could just say like uh, maybe I'll just call this link. Actually, uh, I could just say something like link dot adders uh, href right. You know that would be the beautiful soup way. I don't have beautiful soup right now. I'm just kind of working with um, selenium, and so so instead of that, it's a little bit more cumbersome. I, I can say link dot get attribute um, href and uh, maybe I'm just trying to print that for now and so I kind of print them one by one instead of just printing them all at the end so I'm going to do that and, uh, and I scroll all the way down here and uh, you can see one of the nice things that Selenium actually does even though I have to kind of type a lot more is that it converts those to um, absolute uh, URLs right actually on the page it was just 2.html in my code but it's converting it to this whole thing and if I click that well uh, that's actually great, right? I can see those pages. Okay, so this is doing good so far. Um, one of the things I want to do here uh, is return the list of these things, right? And um, and so maybe what I should do, uh, actually, there, there's kind of a trick here, right? I mean, if I wanted to, I could append all of these to some sort of list and then uh, kind of return that list on the end. Um, I can also use a, a Python list comprehension, which works like this. I kind of grab the thing I'm interested in, 
and put that up here. And uh, and then I put I, this around here like this. So I was trying to like a loop, a loop inside a list. And this is the thing I'm trying to have inside of that. And so I can turn this into this kind of cute one-liner, uh, just like so. So I could do that and I run that. And, uh, and let me scroll down here and kind of see what it ended up with. It gave me this nice list with those two URLs in it, uh, which is exactly um, what I wanted. Okay, so I'm doing pretty good now. Um, th there's one other little detail I, I kind of want to deal with. You can see that this is kind of a pain, right? I have to scroll down a lot because um, when I'm taking this screenshot, actually the window is kind of large. I can't see the window, but it's large and it's taking up a lot of space. Um, so, so maybe what I'd like to do is actually just um, shrink down the window uh, before I uh, before I actually try to do any of this. And um, and, I, and I've already played with different sizes, and, and so let me just kind of type the code here. I'm just checking my notes. Um, I can say b dot set window size window size, and, and these are in some units called pixels, which I'm not going to talk much about now. Um, and, I, and I've just kind of played around and then it turns out that that's a nice size like that. So I'm gonna run that. And, uh, and now I can just kind of, I'm not jumping around too much. I can just see a little bit more, right? I mean, I don't have this massive window that I'm taking a screenshot of. Okay, so, so let me kind of shrink all of this down. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this all kind of makes sense because it's gonna be the backbone for what we build next, right? Um, to kind of think about how this fits into the breadth first search. Um, when we were doing search before and we were on a node, um, we had some sort of node object and the node object would have a children attribute and the children attribute would be this list of other nodes, right? Uh, we don't even have any classes or objects here anymore. And, um, and so kind of visiting a node doesn't mean looking at a children list. Visiting a node means actually going to a real page, the real world, and, uh, and kind of looping all of, over all the A tags and pulling out some information from that. Okay, so let's try to do breadth first search. So this is gonna be a little bit of review here. Um, the main idea for breadth first search is you have some sort of to-do list, like so. And, um, and then eventually you have some sort of like loop. You have something like, you know, while length of to-do is, um, you know, greater than zero, then I do some stuff, right? Uh, I'm gonna leave this here for a while because I, I'd like to write a function for for this piece that kind of does one step. And, and that way, as I'm doing this breadth first search, I can kind of show you one step at a time um, manually, right? I think that'll be a little more um, clear than if I have this loop that just does it really fast. Um, so in, in this to-do list, I have to have some sort of starting point and um, and maybe what I can use for that is just this URL up here, right? I already have this URL as my starting point. I'm just trying to copy this down here so you can actually see what's going on. I'm gonna put that in the list. And, uh, and so maybe what I'll do here is I'll just have some sort of function, right? For what I will eventually put inside of here. And, uh, and that function will be just, let's say like, um, uh, you know, visit next, right? visit next while well, it'll pull whatever's off the to-do list and then and then actually visit it and then figure out how it needs to update the to-do to -do list, right? So the, the, the two main things, right, for a breadth first search are, you know, do the first thing on the list and then add uh, new things to the end of the list, right? So, so I'm kind of working off the beginning and adding things to the end. And, um, and this is actually gonna work beautifully with that function I already wrote, because like the thing we have to do is visiting a URL, and then like the new things are also other URLs to visit. And, and so kind of if you look at this, this is going to be the input to the function I wrote earlier, and this will be the return value from it, right? I'm gonna feed in a URL, that's kind of the task I'm doing, and then we learn about these other URLs here. This is the idea, right? So, so let's do this. So I'll, I'll say something like this. Um, I'm gonna say like, you know, visit, what did I call it? I called it visit page, I guess. So visit page. Well, what page do I want to visit? Um, uh, let me kind of just make this a separate variable so it's very clear. So it's my start URL. Um, here I'm just gonna say like URL equals to do dot pop zero. Whatever's at the beginning, well, that's what I may visit. And then that's gonna return to me some children uh, URLs, 
just like that. All right, so that was the first step. Kind of, kind of the real work was in here, right? Like actually this this little step here is not gonna be too crazy. Um, okay, what about down here? I have to add all these new things to the end of the list. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna say for uh, maybe uh, child uh, URL and children URLs. I'm gonna add those to my to-do list, right? I'm just gonna say to-do.append. Uh, and, and what will I append? I'll just append that new URL. Just like so. And maybe when I'm all done, I'm just going to print off what that is. Okay. So this is good. And I'm going to eventually come back to that loop, but let me kind of just do like one step at a time. So I'm going to say like visit next. And we can see, well, I visit node one. And from that, I discover nodes two and, and three. I'm just going to run this cell again. So, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to visit cell two or, or node two. And, and you can see it visit nodes two and uh, three is still on the list from before and then i added four okay so now when i hit this it's trying to kind of work off the beginning i'm going to visit three i visit three and you can see that from uh three i discover five so five is on the list and then you know four is still there well, let's just keep going i'm just going to go to the end because i want to think through some other issues that are going to come up um four discover six so six is on the list I'm going to do five next, do five. And you notice that five also discovers six and I end up adding uh, six to the list twice. And um, sometimes that's very dangerous, right? Um, if I have some sort of cycle in my graph, which is very common on websites, then I would just keep going and drawing. Um, here it's kind of okay because I guess I just do like a little bit of extra work, but that's definitely something we'll want to fix before we go any further. So now I visited node six twice and, and my to-do list is empty. Um, okay, so, so that seems pretty good. Uh, so I think what we can do is let, let's fix that. Well, let's do this. I mean, let's actually have it in our loop like this so we can kind of see it going faster. Um, while I have something on my to-do list, uh, well, uh, I'm just gonna do it, right? I'm gonna keep doing that until I'm done. And, uh, and we can kind of scroll through and see what's happening in high speed from where I was just at. And, uh, and of course, I visit node six twice, as you can see. So let's try to fix that issue uh, because that's going to be more important before we do the cycles. So I think I have to think a little bit carefully here before I add somebody to here. I, don't, I never want to add the same, uh, same thing twice. And, and so something bad to do would be like this. I could say something like, if not child url and to do then i add it uh, well why is that bad uh, well i'm adding things down here but removing things up here so it is still possible i could get in some sort of perverse cycle where i keep adding the same thing again and again it just kind of enters the list and is removed enters the list and removed so so that's not good i think what i need to do is have a, a separate structure here and um and, and and well how could i do that i guess i could have um uh, you know, something like, well, what is added? And that could be some sort of set. Um, you, you know, I guess what will be in the set to start with? I guess this starting URL. Maybe I'll just put a to-do here, right? So everything that was on my initial thing will be there. And uh, and then I can check this right here, like so. Um, if this URL, and, and this is suddenly becoming good, so I should change the comment, good. Um, if it's not been added before, then I'll add it. And then I'll also put it in this thing, added.add child URL. And so my hope is now when I run this, that I'm not going to visit node six twice anymore. So I'm going to run this. And uh, well, what happened there? This was a separate cell. So let me, let me just run it again because I feel like it looks like I'm deleting the six node and I'm cheating, but I'm really not. Okay, so, so this time I see that there's only one visit to the six node is the second time I see it, I realize, well, I've seen it before and I'm not going to keep, keep visiting it again and again. Okay, so we're doing pretty good here. Um, what I'd like to see though is kind of like, well, how does that graph structure look after I visited all of these different, um, after I visit all these different pages, right? And so for that, I need to use graph viz, right? And so maybe I'm going to head way up here, back to the beginning. Um, actually, I'll do it right here because I don't want to create a new a new browser window. So here, um, I'll say 
um, from graph viz import import graph. Well, I guess I don't really want a graph. I want a directed a directed graph, right? That's what the web is, right? It's a directed graph. And um, and so then when I'm down here, I wonder, I'm just going to delete this so maybe we can kind of see more code at the same time, by the way. Uh, oops. Great, here are my two functions I've been working on. Uh, when I'm down here, I actually want to, from all this work, actually kind of visualize uh, what that set of nodes look like. What is the structure of all the pages on my website? And, and so I'm going to make a new graph viz. Uh, graph, digraph. And um, I haven't talked about this before, actually, but uh, there's kind of like this uh, engine option that I could pass. And um, uh, different engines will be kind of good at making a nice looking picture for different kinds of graphs. Uh, the default one works pretty well for trees or, or maybe DAGs that kind of look like trees. Um, we kind of have these messier graphs now, right, where it's kind of just like a big hairball. And, and so a good uh, engine that can kind of handle that complexity is called Neato, right? So you know, it'll work either way, but we'll get kind of a, a neater picture if I, if I use Neato. Okay. Um, now, if I wanted to, right, I mean, I can always just put, you know, something like this at the end because, well, what does this have? It has a, a wrapper SVG, right? So I can, I could just put this at the end. If I want to, anything that has a wrapper SVG, um, I could also use uh, the display function like I did here. And that's what I'd like to do, kind of after I've gone through each um, each node, right after I've visited each new node, I'd kind of like to see what my graph looks like. So I'm going to say display, display my graph, right? So let me just try to think about what's going to happen as I'm running this code. Um, I'm going to see a picture of what the page looks like. Um, I'm going to add all of these children and then show what the graph looks like. And then I'm going to show what remaining work has to be done. And I'm just going to keep doing that until there's no more work to do. Okay. So what can we do here? Um, I think one thing we can do is every time I visit a URL, uh, I could add that to the graph, right? I could say graph is dot node URL. And, uh, and eventually I may figure out how to add some edges, but, but I'll just kind of start with that. And, uh, and so you can see here's my starting node and then other starting nodes. Really, they're kind of horrible because it's showing me the full URL. Maybe what I like to do is write just some simple function that extracts just the node name. So, so maybe instead of this whole thing, I'd like to just say like one. And then this other one over here, if I can even see it, I'd like this one to just say two. So, so let me head back up here and um, let me just kind of think about how I can get uh, uh, a name out of these nodes. So I'm going to say def node name from a URL. And, and then I may be calling it. Let's just think about that uh, before we actually write too much code. All right, this is just kind of good practice dealing with strings. Uh, so I'm going to put this here. And well, the first thing I should do, let me, let me, let me just print the URL. The first thing I should probably do is probably split it based on that forward slash. And I always do this. Like, I guess like when we're dealing with files, there's this um, kind of annoyance where I have to think about am I on Windows or am I on Mac? Uh, but the internet is nice because, well, it's always the same. It's always forward slash and I get those pieces. And so after I split, I could try and just pull out that last piece. And I, I'm pretty close now. Um, for that thing, oh, excuse me. For that thing, I think I'd like to split it again on the period because I, I just want that first piece. All right, so I'm going to do that. And, and then I just want that first piece like that. So that will be the node name for this URL because it ends in 1.html. And that's really how you should deal with strings. I mean, trying to just like break it down and get it closer and closer to what you want, right? You know, I don't think I could have like kind of done this by just sat down and kind of typed it out. I had to see like each piece as I added it to here and then here and then here and then here on these four steps. Okay, so how are we gonna use this thing? Um, well, we're gonna do this. Down here, we're gonna say, um, 
uh, you know, node name of the URL so that when I actually run this thing, well, that's not what I was hoping for. I was, I was hoping it wouldn't break. Um, why did it break? It's complaining expected string or bytes like object, which happened right here. Was that not a string? Um, what did I return? You, you see my problem actually? So, so I knew that this was not a string. So I'm kind of looking back. Oh, what does this thing return? And then I'm like, oh, oops, I just printed it. No wonder I have, uh, have that problem. Uh, and so I'm going to run this again. And now I can try to see these nice nodes. Okay, there's the two pages, there are the three pages, so on and so forth. And um, and so maybe now what I can do is I can think about actually drawing some edges between these things. And you know, one other thing while I'm here, um, when I have this very long output, uh, what I'd like to do is um, I would like to not have it I'd like to not have it have a scroll bar, like it's just trying to dump out everything so I can kind of easily see. Okay, so I have to figure out the structure between all of these different nodes now. So coming back to my function, um, I have to draw, draw some edges. And so let's just think about it. So I mean, when I visit this URL, um, I get all of these URLs here. So I know there's some sort of edge from this one uh, to this one. And um, and so what would happen if I did something like this? What if I if I just said like you know graph is uh, dot edge, and then I want the node name of the URL. I have an edge from there to the node name of the child URL. And this code isn't quite right. I have to kind of think carefully here. Um, so there's some things like for each child, uh, I never want to add the same child to the, my to do list twice. But I might want to do this to the same uh, child twice, right? Because there might be multiple parents of the same node. So it'd actually be more appropriate to do that. I, I want to do this for every child, right? Because I'll, I might draw multiple edges to the same child. So I'm going to draw this. And, uh, and let's just kind of take a minute to look through here, right? So I start off, well, node one goes to two and three. And then I explore two. And from there, I find four, right? So you can see I added in the four node. Um, then I explore three, and from three I discover the five nodes. It's kind of becoming this longer chain out in both directions. And then from the four node, I discover the sixth node, even longer. And then only at the very end, when I visit five, do I discover another way to six. And then it kind of becomes this like little tighter uh, bundle. And, and then, of course, it's done, and there's nothing left to search, right? Because the sixth node, which is the last thing I search, has nothing else on it. Okay. So there's just like one more thing I want to do here uh, to wrap up. And that is, uh, you know, this is not very efficient to be using a list for my to-do list, right? Um, because popping from the beginning is notoriously slow. And, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say from collections, import my DQ or double-edged Q like that. And, um, and, and kind of changing this over is pretty simple actually. Um, I can create a, a DQ with those things in it. And uh, does that still work, actually? Let me just kind of check. Um, close, but now it's saying I can't pop. I guess they just kind of changed the name of that. We have a pop left. And I think append still works just like it does. Let's just kind of run this thing. And, and I can see that I have a DQ here now. Same picture in the end. So that all works well. Let me just head up to the final code. Uh, and, and take a peek here. And uh, and now I think I'm in good shape, right? This is going to be much more efficient using a DQ for that because I can both pop from the left efficiently and append to the right efficiently.